Welcome to another episode of It's Just Alex P. And on this episode, we're doing another internet rabbit hole. So I was out and I saw this article come up and I wanted to check it out and actually react on it. Uh, so this is about a new program uh, in Georgia that's gonna be launched that's gonna give $850 to uh, low-income black women uh, monthly. So according to blackenterprise.com is where I found the article. So let me read through it a little bit. Scores of black women in Georgia will get $850 monthly courtesy of a new guaranteed income pilot program. In her house calls for up to 650 50 black women to get the money with no conditions for two years. Okay, no conditions, all right? It aims to better their financial stability, mental health, and come back to racial wealth gap per the Huffington Post. Rolling out early next year and slated to distribute 13 million, the plan is supposedly set to be one of the largest such programs in America. The drive is being led by Georgia's Reliance and Opportunity Fund, a group of local elected officials, as well as nonprofit Give Diversity. The program will have participants who live in Atlanta and other parts of suburban and rural Georgia who are, who are near, uh, near or under the federal poverty line. It will also study how such unconditional cash transfers affect the financial and mental well-being of partakers. According to the Huffington Post, the program is purposefully being started in Atlanta, a city with some of the most pronounced income equality in the country. Expected to be launched first in the city, city's old fourth ward in early 2022, it will expand to at least two more sites in southern southwest Georgia and metro Atlanta suburbs. The funding is per perhaps vital as the medium black family in the U.S owns 3,600 in wealth, just about 2% of the 147,000 that the median white family owns, based on 2019 research from the Institute for Policy Studies. In Georgia, about 26% of black women live in poverty versus 14% of white women. Furthermore, black women have been hit excessively hard by COVID-19 pandemic and, and its related pandemic economic crisis, making them more likely than other groups to face job loss and eviction. Overall, black people in the U.S. have endured higher rates of hospitalization, death, and COVID than whites. Black women are among the most likely groups to experience cash shortfalls that make covering basic needs difficult. This isn't the result of poor choices. It's the result of pervasive economic insecurity that has the sharpest impacts on women and communities of color, as said by Hope Willensack, executive director of GRO Fund, said. Guaranteed income is a step towards creating a more just and equitable economy. All right, so what do I think about this as a black man? Ooh, so I read into the article, there's a couple of things that came to mind first. Uh, one of the first things that caught me off guard, that caught me, is that there's no conditions to the cash. So you can use the cash for anything. So, <laughs> I don't know the contracts are gonna sign, but if you can use the cash for anything and there's, there's no condition, I'm not saying, not saying people are gonna make the wrong decision, not saying it, but there's a possibility, right? Second thing is that when we're talking, when we talk about hope, she said black women are most are among the most likely group to experience cash shortfalls that make covering basic needs difficult. That that's true. That might be true. Okay, this isn't the result of poor choices, and that's the word right there that got me because I think we also as black people we have to take responsibility as well for some of the choices that we make, and to say that some of these some of these women or some of these people have end up in bad situation doesn't have anything to do with their choices that's just i don't like that at all all right i don't like that because it just paints us as complete always being victims right the next thing that i think about as well is that this you know this they're going to give them 850 dollars right every single month but in a sense how about they if they're giving them 850 dollars how about they say hey we're gonna teach you how to actually use this $850 and make it into something else. It's like that thing where basically they're just, they'll just keep us on the system in a sense, right? So instead of saying, all right, here's $850, 
use it and you can grow a business or you can you can you can take it put it in a bank account or put it in a mutual fund put it in investments put it in all these things and just to figure out how you can actually make money off of money they won't teach us that they're basically in a sense giving us a fish but not teaching us how to fish so we're always relying on the system what are their thoughts right where, where are they coming from when they they're giving this 850 dollars out it done studies before that when they did give money out, you know, the people in the study made better financial decisions. They use it for basic needs, they use it for healthcare, and for any kind of emergency purpose, right? So they're probably seeing this and saying, all right, if we're able to give $850 to black women who make less money than white women, it levels the playing field in a way. The only thing that I want from this study is that I personally wish is that it's one thing to give free money, but it continues to perpetuate that whole thing that black people are a burden on the system. The question is, what's the actual outcome? What happens after this study is done, right? What what do they do, right? Once you give them that money and that money cuts off, what happens there, right? What's the outcome there? Do you continue to give them money, continue to have people rely on the system, or do you now use that research to now talk to politicians or talk to people that is gonna help actually change the bigger picture, right? Or do they now say, all right, we give them 850, now we need to give every person below the poverty line this 850 throughout the country. And we just create another social program in the sense we should be, in the sense we need to be creating programs that help people make it for themselves, right? And my hope for this is that this turns out to be an awesome research, that it works out, that we can, then we can use that information now to take it to our politician, take it to the people that make decisions and we, we get the help that's needed. But the help cannot continue to be we just give people free money. We have to make the bigger changes that's gonna actually help. Is this just another rabbit hole that now we're saying, hey, we can use the study to say, hey, black people just need this, black people just need this, but we don't actually do anything with it. So that's my thought on it. Uh, you know, uh, my biggest thing that I always worry about is that I don't want to want, want our community to continue to be seen as a burden. We're not a burden. There's a lot of talented talent in the black community, a lot of knowledge, a lot of it that's just not out there shining as yet. When, when a black person makes it in, a, in, a, in, a, in the job that they're getting paid the same amount as their white counterparts, right? Because there's so much talent out there and just sometimes people just need an opportunity. You can't continue just giving people, giving people but they learn nothing from it. So that's my thoughts on uh, this article. What's next, right? Thanks for joining us for another episode of It's Just Alex B. Internet Rabbit Hole.